than we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be alive with the Lord forever. Yes, sisters and brothers, I can't tell you what an honor it is for me to preach these verses. These all important verses describing that moment when the trumpet shall sound and just like that, we will be raptured, taken up into the clouds to live with our Lord in heaven for eternity. I hope that you will be with me. I hope that you will be with me on that day. Will you be? Have you prayed the sinner's prayer? Do you know whether you've been made right with God? You need to get right or you're going to get left behind. And dear friends, that day is coming. In an instant, believers will vanish, be taken up into heaven, never more to be seen on this earth. It may be 20 years from now. It may be 20 minutes from now. That moment may come before I even finish this sentence. Okay, that wasn't it, but it could have been. So again, I ask you, are you ready? Uh, hold on a second. First of all, I apologize for the caricature of an end times preacher. What? What do you mean, caricature? Well, I mean, you're only here so that I can illustrate how wrong you are. What do you mean, wrong? Paul isn't talking about a rapture. At least... Not in the way you're talking about it. We will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Yeah, the word translated meet is the Greek word harpazo. So, meet means meet. That's certainly not the case these days. When someone talks about meeting, you have to specify. Online, we're in person. So we're going to Zoom with Jesus at the second coming. No, I'm just saying that harpazo uh, refers to a specific type of meeting. In those days when someone important was coming to town, he didn't just sit at home on, and await their arrival. Uh, as they approached, you would go out to meet them, to harpazo. So, what's your point? The point is, you don't harpazo and stay. Right? The imagery that Paul is drawing on here is that of a conquering king returning to his people. Uh, while he's still en route, we harpazo. We rush to the outskirts of town to greet him. It's not an evacuation. It's the start of a victory parade that will uh, end in a homecoming. It's thy kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. And this is no minor detail. I'm not quibbling over an obscure verb. The misunderstanding of this verse and others like it has clouded our vision, causing us to overlook a clear theme running throughout the New Testament. And that theme is this. The work of salvation is not merely about preserving souls for the afterlife. It's about everything. The God we meet in Genesis who creates and takes joy in what's created, that God refuses to scrap what he's created and settle for souls. Heck no. And Paul is just adamant about this. For Paul, salvation is about, to use his words, all things. You may think, well, he means spiritual things. But no, Paul, Paul wants to clarify. He says, uh, things in heaven and on earth, which seems pretty comprehensive. But just so we get the picture, he also says things visible and invisible. Ha! Everyone knows that the day of the Lord is a day of fire, a day of destruction. And I don't know about you, friend, but I don't tend to set on fire that which I plan to save. True. And friend, I tend not to execute the person I wish to make king. But that's what happens. 
apparently that's how it all works. Getting chaos and death out of things and eternal life into things does not come easy. It's not an easy transition. There's death before resurrection. There's fire and destruction before there's glory and wholeness. Paul compares the whole process to giving birth. It's painful, messy, but ultimately it's miraculous. Which is, in part, what I find so troubling about the notion of a rapture. If you're familiar with this business, you know that what follows the rapture is this time of tribulation for those left behind. And it's like, oh boy, where do I have to sign up to get exempt from all that mess? No, thank you. What if we recognize that salvation, rather than being a ticket out, is an invitation to enter in, to participate in God's ongoing work in the world, and to understand that the work is not about this thing and do, or doing that thing, but it's about all things, that the whole of your life is a spiritual undertaking. I mean, if we stopped hoping for a, an escape hatch, but instead understood that even the frustrations and setbacks, even the trials and tribulations, the failures and heartbreaks, that even those things can be meaningful, well, then we begin to face our, the fire with courage and hope trusting that what beats at the heart of this big, beautiful, messy universe is a love not even death can contain. Now, I realize I'm talking rather abstractly uh, in generalities. That's a risk you run when you're talking about all things. It's a lot of territory to cover. And I get that you may want to know, well, how does this all translate into brass tacks. Well, there's a sense in which I can't give you that answer. The question of how God will call you to participate in this ongoing work of salvation, it differs from person to person. I don't know the challenges at work you may have. I don't know the relationships you'll have to navigate or what else might comprise your week. The answer to that question and how you can participate in this work of salvation, well, that'll be for you to work out. That'll be for you to answer. Maybe the best thing I can do is just ask a question. Are you ready? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.